Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting integral which I posted on Twitter a couple days ago, I think uh, it was yesterday and uh, two of my uh, colleagues, uh, followers on Twitter uh, submitted solutions uh, they're very uh, interesting approaches but I just wanted to share with you my approach, my take on this problem so let's go ahead and get started okay, so uh, we're going to be evaluating this integral, obviously, as was mentioned in one of the solutions on Twitter. Uh, there is a trigonometric substitution that you can use, like you can um, replace x with secant theta. But um, we're going to be using a different approach here. So, so the type of substitution we're going to use here is going to be kind of like um, non-standard. Uh, so that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to be using, uh, first of all, uh, we're going to replace x with 1 plus z divided by 1 minus z. Okay, that's the type of substitution we're going to use. And then let's see where this takes us. I'm going to go ahead and calculate x squared minus 1 from here. That should give me 1 plus z squared divided by 1 minus z squared. And then that minus 1. Okay, if you go ahead and expand this, we're going to be getting 1 plus 2z plus, uh, oh, actually I can go ahead and do it a little differently here. So let me go ahead and do this. Make a common denominator right away because subtracting these two quantities would be fairly easy. Now, what are you gonna get on the top? So it's kind of like a plus b squared minus a minus b squared. That should always equal 4ab. So we're gonna be getting 4z from here and the bottom is gonna be one minus z squared, okay? So this is what x squared minus 1 equal to. Now, let's go ahead and calculate dx here. Uh, at this point, we don't really need to uh, solve for z, but at the end, when we solve the problem, we're going to have to go back to this and uh, solve z for x. Okay? So the dx is going to be, since we replace x with this, uh, the dx is going to be the derivative of both sides. So let's go ahead and take the derivative. That's kind of like the quotient, so we're going to be using the quotient rule there. The derivative of 1 plus c is 1, multiply by the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom is negative 1, multiply by the top, and all that divided by the bottom squared, okay? If you go ahead and, uh, of course, we have to add a dz there. If you go ahead and simplify this, uh, we should be getting 1 minus z, that's going to be a positive 1 when we multiply, plus 1 plus z, divided by 1 minus z quantity squared, times dz and now the z cancels out and we end up with dx equals 2dz over 1 minus z quantity squared okay so the nice thing about this type of substitution is that when you calculate uh, both of these notice that they have the same expression in the denominator okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and substitute this into our expression and if we do that, uh, we need x squared minus 1 to the 10th power, but we need the reciprocal of that. So let's go ahead and do that. x squared minus 1 to the 10th power is going to equal 4z to the 10th power divided by 1 minus z squared to the 10th power. That's just going to be 20th power. Okay? And then we're going to go ahead and flip this. So the reciprocal of this expression is going to be 1 minus z to the 20th power divided by 4 to the 10th and z to the 10th. You can go ahead and separate those now. Okay, so now this expression is going to be multiplied by dx, which is right here. So let's go ahead and multiply those two quantities in the integral symbol. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have 1 minus z to the 20th power divided by 4 to the 10th, z to the 10th, multiply by 2 dz over 1 minus z quantity squared. Okay, so that's basically going to give us an easier integral, which is not going to be real short, but uh, we'll just see what happens, okay? All right, so now if you go ahead and simplify this, 2 and 4 to the 10th are constants. We can actually go ahead and take those out. And 2 divided by 4 to the 10th. So let's go ahead and do that here. Uh, 4 can be written as 2 squared. So that would be 2 over 
2 to the 20th power and we can go ahead and write it as 1 over 2 to the 19th power. That'll be our constant. So let's go ahead and take that out first. And then inside the integral, we're going to have these two are going to cancel out. So they have the same base. So the exponents will be subtracted. That should give us 1 minus z to the 18th power. And then that is divided by z to the 10th and multiply by dz. Okay. So this is an integral that can be evaluated very easily, but we just got to use the binomial theorem here to expand 1 minus z to the 18th power, and then we'll just separate all these terms. Okay, let's go ahead and explore this a little bit more, and then we will do the back substitution and see what the answer looks like. Okay, so, so let's see what happens if we use the binomial theorem inside the integral. Uh, we're going to be getting uh, 1 first, obviously, and then I'm not going to write the 18, choose 0 at this point, so it's 1, as you know, and 1, uh, powers of 1 I don't need to include, so I'm only going to in, uh, include the powers of z here, and the terms are going to alternate because of the negative z. Okay, so it's going to look like 18, choose 1, times z, and then I'll have 18, choose 2, z squared, minus 18 choose 3, z cubed, plus dot, dot, dot. Let's go ahead and uh, expand two more terms at the end. Obviously, notice that uh, the, the terms with the even powers of z are positive, and this is going to end up with z to the power uh, 18 at the end, right? So we're supposed to have 19 terms uh, from z to the 0 to z to the 18, which is the highest power. So 18 is even, so that's going to be a positive. The one before that is going to be a negative term, which is 18 to 17 times z to the power 17, and plus we're going to get just z to the power 18 here, okay? So just wanted to show you first and last term so you can get an idea, and the whole thing is divided by z to the 10th and multiply by dz, okay? So now we're going to go ahead and divide every term by z to the 10th, uh, so it's going to look like kind of like a giant sum here, uh, 1 over 2 to the 19th power can just stay outside, and I still have the integral symbol because I haven't integrated yet, but I'm going to be getting from here z to the power negative 10 minus 18, choose 1, which I can write as 18, z divided by z to the 10th is going to be z to the power negative 9. Now, it's better if you include these as negative powers because it's easier to integrate, and later on you can just turn it to another form. Okay, 18 choose 2 is basically going to be, we can just go ahead and calculate this here. Uh, it's going to be 18 times 17 divided by 2, and that should be 9 times 17, which is 153. So it's going to be 153 z to the power negative 8, right? Because 2 minus 10 is negative 8. As you see, the powers are getting larger. And then uh, minus, so let's go ahead and calculate 18 choose 3 here. That will be 18 times 17 times 16 divided by 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is going to be 6, so this should be a 3, right? Uh, eight, 6 goes into 18 3 times. And then 3 times uh, 17 is going to be 51. So we're basically looking at 50... Um, 16 times 51, and you can actually calculate that. That's, that's not too hard. 16 times 50 is uh, 800, and then if you just add a 16 to it, it's going to be 816. So that will be minus 816 z to the power negative 7. I just wanted to show you a few terms here and there uh, to give you a bigger picture. Okay, now this should be 18, uh, so that'll be minus 18 z to the power 7. After a while, uh, we're getting uh, positive powers of z, obviously. And at the end, uh, we're going to have z to the power 8. Okay? So all this needs to be integrated with dz. Okay? So, now we have a constant, obviously. And at this moment, we can just go ahead and stop because this is very trivial. But I just wanted to give you guys a little bit more. Uh, so let's see where this uh, takes us. Um, I'm going to integrate these terms. So let's see where, what we get from here. 1 over 2 to the power 19. Now I'm going to start integrating. So to integrate uh, a term like 
z to the power n dz, you know the rule, if n is not equal to negative 1, we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by that number, okay? And then plus z, of course, is going to follow. Okay, so what I need to do then is increase each exponent by 1 and divide by that number. So it's going to give me z to the power negative 9 divided by negative 9 minus uh, 18 z to the power negative 8 divided by negative 8 plus 153 z to the power negative 7 divided by negative 7 and then minus 816 z to the power negative 6 divided by negative 6 okay and uh, let's skip some terms here and then this is going to look like 18 z to the 8th divided by 8 plus z to the power 9 divided by 9 and at the end we're going to have our infamous constant c okay all right now, uh, at this point, we actually got the answer, but you can just go ahead and simplify a little bit more, like uh, 18 eighths can be simplified. Now, the question is, is 153 uh, divisible by 7? It's not, so it's just going to stay as a fraction. 8 16 uh, is, is divisible by 6, actually. So you can go ahead and simplify that, so on and so forth. So you get the idea. So now our goal is going to be able to, uh, is going to be write, writing this, uh, in terms of x, obviously, right? So we got to go back, or I can just tell you what it is. Uh, our expression was, uh, first initial uh, assumption was x equals 1 plus z over 1 minus c. So what we got to do here is basically, let me pull that up a little bit. Uh, our goal is to be able to write z in terms of x. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for uh, z here. Let's go ahead and use cross multiplication. And we should be getting 1 plus z is equal to x minus xz. If I go ahead and get all these z terms on one side and the others on the other side, take out the z, I'll be getting x plus 1, x minus 1. So basically, z is equal to x minus 1 over x plus 1. So it's kind of like finding the inverse function of this, okay? You know, in inverse function, we switch the x and y. Here, we were switching the x and z. So that's my key uh, to the solution. Basically, every z is going to be replaced with that, and I'm going to be getting my answer. Just to show you what that's going to look like, obviously, at this point, you can just go ahead and write this as negative 1 over z to the 9, uh, 9 times z to the 9. So that's going to look like this. If I do that, you know, it's just going to be um, negative 1 over uh, z to the power ni uh, 9 times z to the power 9. And z is going to be that. So you can just go ahead and write it like this. Uh, ninth power. And what you can actually do is write the x plus 1 here uh, as a ninth power. So it's going to look like this. Okay. This is going to be a positive term and so on and so forth. But you get the idea. Go ahead and replace all these z's with their equivalents here. And then you'll get the complete solution. Okay, so this is the approach that I really like, but I definitely I appreciate all the other solutions. Uh, please comment uh, below uh, what you think, or if you have any alternatives, please share with us. Thank you for watching, uh, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.